Welcome to our lecture online. One of the most prominent features of Mars, and it's not a permanent feature, are the huge dust storms that at times envelop the entire planet. At that point, nothing can be seen on the surface from space. Any pictures taken, any telescopes pointed at Mars can barely make up any features at all, just the very rough, large features, potentially the, the main continental parts of the, of the planet, but any of the details are simply obscured. Now for spacecraft that are on the surface of Mars, it's a real problem because at some points the sun is barely visible, if visible at all, and there's simply no energy being received from the sun for the solar panels, and the solar panels get covered by later dust, so they're no longer effective, and so they really have to put them in kind of a shutdown mode, a, a standby mode to save as much power as possible and hopefully ride through the storm. Now these storms, these dust storms could last up to a year and so it could be a real problem. Typically, they don't last for that long, and hopefully enough can be saved as far as power is concerned so the spacecraft can continue after the dust storm. How often do they occur? Well, about once every seven years, if you look at the last 50 years. We look at the last 50 years, notice we had one in 1971, 1977, 1982, 1994, 2001, 2007, and 2018. The one in 2018 kind of lasted into 2019. So that they typically span a number of months. Now, the whole planet is simply covered by dust. And you wonder, well, why is that on Mars? What are the reasons why Mars has these enormous dust storms? Well, for one thing, there's no liquid water on the surface. There's an atmosphere. And there's a lot of loose sand and dust on the surface that can easily get kicked up. Now, there are winds on Mars. And if you look at the wind speeds, at the Viking landing site, the average wind speed was about 2 to 7 meters per second. But in the fall, it increases to between 5 and 10 meters per second. And it turns out that the starting time of these dust storms tend to be in the fall. So it seems like in the fall, the wind speeds are greater. Now, of course, that's the fall relative to the northern hemisphere, which would make it the spring relative to the southern hemisphere, when the southern polar cap is melting and more atmosphere is going into, into uh, more of the uh, frozen carbon dioxide is sublimating and going into the atmosphere. And so that may be the cause of it, or at least part of the cause. Notice that the global average wind speed is about 10 meters per second, 35 kilometers per hour, which is relatively fast. That's faster than the average wind speeds on the Earth, definitely. And the maximum wind speeds can be as much as 100 kilometers per hour, which is 60 miles per hour. Now, since the atmosphere isn't very dense, there's not a lot of forces associated with it. But even at the low density of Mars, when the wind speeds kick up to these high velocities, they could potentially kick up a lot of dust into the atmosphere. Keep also in mind that the gravitational force on Mars is far less than the gravitational force on the Earth, so it doesn't take as much force to get dust to go into the atmosphere. Well, we have noticed by witnessing these dust storms from afar, of course, that they don't always start in the same location of the planet. It seems to vary, so there's not a specific spot that kind of sets everything in motion. But once it starts in one location, then the other locations tend to also begin to add more dust in the atmosphere. So it's kind of a, uh, a process that gets the rest of the planet going. And before you know it, the entire planet is covered in a huge dust storm. The visibility goes way down. If you are on the surface of the planet, the sun begins to wane. It becomes more and more difficult to see it. And at some point, the sun is not even visible or just barely visible through the dust that, uh, that envelops the planet. Yeah, the cause is not known. There's lots of theories. I've, led, I've read a lot of the different theories, and some of them really don't make any sense. They, they're grasping for straws, it almost seems like. They really don't seem to know. Now, one thing that may be contributing is, again, if we look at the Southern Hemisphere, we have this big polar cap and this huge region to the 50th parallel south. Uh, that is covered in frozen carbon dioxide in the wintertime, and of course when it gets warmer in the spring, in the sun hemisphere, southern hemisphere spring, which is the northern hemisphere fall, all that ice begins to sublimate, that carbon dioxide ice sublimates, is added to the atmosphere, you have a lot more circulation of the atmosphere than in, in the atmosphere of Mars, you have a lot more circulation than you have on the Earth because of the lower density, 
and that sometimes get things going. And then if you have the, uh, the winds coming down from the ice sheet onto the land as it gets warmer, that could potentially could get things started. At least we know that there's higher wind speeds for various reasons, which again, in the end, would be the cause for the dust storms to exist. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that doesn't occur anywhere else in the universe. Uh, well, I shouldn't say universe, our solar system. Um, however, on the Earth, we do have these huge dust storms as well. Uh, they happen in Australia, they've happened in Africa, in the Sahara Desert region. So again, wherever there's a lot of loose sand and dust, and there's winds that pick up, you could have these enormous dust storms. And even on the Earth, we don't always know what causes these dust storms, but it's associated with higher speed winds. And so we see them happening on the Earth, but not in a global sense. However, we do know that when the dust storm occurs, like in, in Australia, or a dust storm occurs in, in the Sahara Desert, it does seem to have an influence over much of the world. This dust circulates the world, but not to the extent that it happens on Mars. And it doesn't last near as long. Gravity tends to pull things out of the atmosphere much more easily. In Mars, once it's in the higher atmosphere, it doesn't come down nearly as easy, and it stays up there for a much greater amount of time. But yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be working on the causes of these dust storms for many years to come, and maybe one day they'll figure it out for sure. But at this point, it's still a guessing game. <laughs>